Hello. I was talking to a potential client. Um, they're really interested in a service I offer called the Funding Roadmap. And this is a service where I help you design your fundraising strategy. And they asked me, we really need money now, so I we should probably do it now, but we don't have financial projections yet. Should we wait to work with you to do our funding roadmap until, you know, wait until we have our financial projections? And that's a really good question. It's so it's interesting because the last person I worked with on a funding roadmap, um, she did not have financial projections, but she had an idea <laughs> that um, the business that she is working on starting up will become rather profitable over the next few years and will increase in value um, quite a bit and will pro she'll probably be able to have a pretty um, profitable exit at some point. Um, so we were able to design her strategy because even though we didn't know exactly what was going to happen, um, what we talked about is we narrowed down the fact that probably a debt offering would not make sense because it's a newer business and um, it would take a while before the business would be cash flow positive. And so that kind of made it, that kind of takes us to two options, which is equity or a convertible instrument that will convert into equity in the future. And in her case, it really didn't make sense to do a convertible instrument because um, it kind of adds complexity. And if you usually the way a convertible instrument works is that it converts into equity when you raise additional funds. And she wasn't sure she would ever need to raise additional funds. She felt like this one round might be enough to get her to where she wouldn't need to raise any additional money. So we decided on equity and um, we decided on a target dividend based on the idea that she knew the business would become fairly profitable. So we didn't have to get into all the details on the financial projections and what the margins would be, but for a business that is gonna have um, smaller margins, you know, is gonna maybe be operating at a loss for a few years and maybe, you know, isn't gonna explode in terms of the profitability, which is pretty common, you know, most business, it's really more like software startups <laughs> that um, have that ability to become super profitable and have a, an, a lucrative exit. Um, so for most businesses, you know, there's probably gonna be a relatively small profit margin. You know, maybe it's gonna be, you know, 10%, 20%, 15%, something like that. Um, and that's where you kind of do need to have an idea of what that's likely to look like because that's gonna give you an idea of what you can afford to pay to your investors. So, you know, um, so you have to kind of think about how much money am I raising and what do I want my annual returns to my investors to be? So, you know, if I'm raising a million dollars and I want to pay an annual return of, let's say, 8%, am I going to have a big enough profit margin to be able to pay 8% of a million, which is 80000 So, um, So in many cases, it's a really good idea to... Um, you know, to do projections before you plan your fundraising strategy. And this is where I say, you know, it doesn't need to be scary or intimidating to do financial projections. I have some templates that I help my clients use. They don't have to be complicated. It's really just a matter of what I tell them to do is start with um, thinking about what your expenses will be and be um, generous with your expenses. You know, put in a salary for yourself that maybe is a little bit low in the first few years, but then becomes more market rate. And then, it, you know, going forward after the first year or two, um, put in all the staff you're going to need, um, put in marketing and keep in mind, honestly, it tends to cost a lot more than you think to run a business. So, um, you know, put in generous amounts for all the different line items that you can think of the expenses and then put, then do projections of your revenue and your revenue projections are going to be based on what you're selling, 
how much of the things that you're selling you're going to sell, what those prices are, um, and be somewhat conservative about that because things often take a little bit longer than you think they will to, um, you know, to reach the amount of sales that you want to reach. And so once you do that, you're going to have an idea of what are your gross revenues going to be each year over the next, let's say, five to seven years compared to your expenses. And you're probably going to see that in the first few years, maybe many years, I've had clients where it took them like 10 years to break even. Um, it's your your revenues are going to be less than your expenses which is totally fine i mean that's exactly why you want to raise money from investors because it takes time to be able to cover your expenses and if you can't pay for all those things that you need to pay for to make your business successful like giving yourself a reasonable salary you know hiring the team you need having high quality marketing then it's going to be really hard to reach your revenue goals so it is a really good idea if you possibly can to create a, a, a spreadsheet with some projections. You don't have to show them to anyone. You know, you don't have to show them to potential investors until you feel more comfortable with them. Um, but it will help you when you're designing your fundraising strategy to know, you know, what what margin is left after all is said and done to be able to start to pay my investors and you know unlike a, a vc backed startup where investors only get paid at the exit and so you kind of almost don't have to worry about it you just have to grow 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 and hope that when the exit happens that's when everyone makes their money if you're not that type of business which most businesses are not um you have to think about an annual or quarterly payment to your investors whether in the form of a debt payment or a a dividend or something like that and um, it's okay if nothing gets paid for the first few years that's totally normal but um, you know you want to plan as to how that is eventually going to happen and then make sure that you will have enough money to give your investors a reasonable return and what is a reasonable return that really varies I've had clients offer returns that are as low as like 2% a year, 2% meaning 2% of what the investor put in. These are highly mission driven businesses where the investor is happy to make 2% even though they could right now make more than that putting their money in a bank CD. But that's okay because the investors are really passionate about the mission. I've had other clients that are shooting for 9, 10, 15% annual payment. So it's all going to depend on what's reasonable. If you have a really small margin, you're not probably going to be able to offer as big of a return to your investors. And that's not necessarily a bad thing because your investors are going to invest for more than reasons than just to make a financial return. They're going to invest out of their passion for whatever it is you're doing, the love of your business, the excitement about your passion as the founder. So, that was a long-winded answer to the question, but I look forward to getting any questions or comments that you may have on this topic.